with a photo LED. So a photo LED, what we do is we put it in the circuit reverse bias. But what we do is we expose the, the junction to light. And then what it does is it absorbs the energy coming from the light to reduce the barrier voltage. You kind of make it act like, sort of like a zener dot. But instead of a, a outside voltage uh, causing the thing to uh, to change, it's uh, the size of the barrier voltage to change. Uh, what we're using is we're using the light. So we put it in there, we put it in there for reverse bias. But the problem is, is that we never can get it down to close to zero volts. So uh, somebody was doing it, and I think when it was turned wide open, the dang thing dropped about two volts. And if we put two volts into a digital circuit, it, uh, it would a digital circuit would think two volts is high. So that means what we would have to do is we would have to combine it with a uh, transistor. So what we would have to do is we would have to take the output of the optical interrupter or the photodiode and then saturate a transistor with it. Because if I'm going to input this into a digital circuit, we've got to get lower than, than 800 millivolts. And usually it's 400 millivolts is what, what, we're actually, uh, what we're actually shooting for. So, of course, the, the photodiodes were around for a while. By the way, we had some in there too. Uh, but once we started the lab, some of the guys I told to skip over, uh, I didn't know we, we had them back there. So we got this device like this. And it's called a photo LED. It's called a photo transistor. And the symbol of a phototransistor, of course, it looks like a regular transistor. But over here on the lead, uh, it's where the light shines. Sometimes they bring the base out. Sometimes they don't bring the base out. Now, what's nice about the transistor is we put enough light energy into this thing, it's going to saturate. And if it saturates, it's going to drop less than a volt, which is good to bring into a digital circuit. Uh, some of your phototransistors uh, actually bring the base out. Which if they bring the base out, it means you could bias the base to a certain voltage. So you could turn it on a little bit and you could turn it off a little bit. So let's say you wanted to transfer sound wave, sound over the transistor. Well, if you're going to transfer sound, when the light comes on, you don't want it to saturate, right? You want it to turn on a little more and turn off a little more. So what we would do is we'd get a phototransistor that brought the base out. And if it brings the base out, then what could we do? Well, I could come over here with my resistors, and I could bias it over here. Uh, you know, I could put a, I'd have to have a resistor right there. Uh, but if this was... 12 volts and I could bias it at 6. And now when my light went up, the output would go down and when my light went down, the output would go up just like a bipolar transistor. But instead of inputting a base current, we're, we're using light to establish the base current. So I'll show you all further. Of course, it's got to have a lead on it. And then the one that's offset would be the uh, the base, and then the other lead would be the collector. 
Uh, this is a pretty standard pack. You can get regular bipolar transistors in that, uh, but this is a photo transistor. So I can literally transfer stuff through light, which is pretty nice. Now what's nice about this one is that the base lead comes out, so what can we do? So we can bias it so we can pass audio. If I'm gonna if I'm gonna use it as a switch, I just wouldn't hook the base lead up. In fact, I've seen them sometimes cut it off. I cut the base lead off. You know what? That way you don't have to worry about it. But audio goes up and down, right? So uh, if you wanted to pass audio or sound through this thing, then, uh, and we have these things all over the place. Uh, 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 this is very very popular in machines. And you can usually tell them they'll have a little three leads on. Them. Then what they'll do is on this side, inside you don't see it. They'll have a a, a photo. They'll have an LED, and then over here uh, they would have your photo transistor. And these are called optical isolators. And that's exactly what they're used for. So it'll let me bring the information in, uh, especially on something like a PLC, a, a program logic controller. Anybody had those classes? A PLC is in an industrial environment, and we have voltage spikes, and we have all kinds of stuff going. So what these guys are in there, so your every one of your input ports, every one of your input devices go through one of these guys. So I mean, some electrician gets out there and accidentally hooks up 120 volts to a 24 volt circuit, you'll pop this thing, but you won't blow your PLC up. Does that make sense? You won't have a catastrophic failure of the PLC. You might lose one of your input ports because somebody screwed up, but what you're blowing up is you're blowing up this little optical isolate. And it don't allow the energy to get into because it's passed from my input port into my PLC through this optical isolate. And the outputs are the same way. So no matter what's out there, it's going to go from the, P from the electronics inside the PLC that goes to the output port, it's going to go through an optical isolate. That makes sense. Uh, we can show y'all uh, some. Uh, let me let me bring up uh, uh, in advanced PLCs. We talk about this a little bit about syncing and sourcing and all that other neat stuff when you hook these things up. I don't know where I put it at. Uh, Y'all see something that says sourcing seeking? I don't know where I put it at, guys. See, I'll see, see it's in there. Uh, you can look these modules up. No, I know those are not mine because I don't do all this fancy stuff. This looks like one of the names. Did I put that? I put it in front of another slide. I had it uh, intended to uh, move it out on a slide by itself. Yeah, so this is a basic. Uh, this is a basic input right here. So this would be uh, this would be a standard PLC. So this is your optical isolator. 
And what this does, it allows you to establish what's common. Uh, then this would actually go in, this would be TTL levels going into the PLC. Uh, this would be for an AC input module during PLCs. So when you buy PLCs, you can get, either get AC inputs or DC inputs. And of course, uh, the, the DC in, the, the AC inputs actually have to be converted to DC, right? You understand? Can you see what it does? So it has a bridge rectifier coming in, and then, uh, so the input actually turns this thing on. And, uh, these would be, uh, these are the outputs. So this would be a transistor output, a, a sourcing DC module, a sinking DC module. Uh, this right here would be an AC module. Uh, that either uses a triax. So this is a device we'll talk about later on. We'll talk about these guys called triax. And these are the devices we use for AC switches. The primary uses an AC switch. So if you ever heard of a solid state relay, it usually uses a triax. Uh, if you got motion detectors or something like that out there at your house, Odds are it turns that light on with the triad. So it's a, it's a solid state switch is what it is. And then these are relay outputs. Uh, so these guys right here uh, depends on what you use as a common. Notice the sourcing output uses a positive common and a sinking output uses a negative common. But AC, AC doesn't, doesn't have a common. So when you buy when you buy DC modules, uh, if you got a if you got a um, uh, yeah. if you got a modular PLC, and you buy an output module. You need to you need to either decide if you want to sink or source. Do y'all know what that is? Okay. Well, when we hook up our PLC, uh, we have to decide or figure out. What what is what is common? What's common? Of course, common is is not negative, and common doesn't have to be positive. Common is what you decide to use as your common. So that means if, if I if I come over here on a PLC and I decide to come over here and uh, so I'm over here on a push button. And they don't, no, here you go. So I'm up here on a push button. Okay, so I, when I put a push button up, I got to hook two wires up to it. And I'm going to have, I'm going to have a bunch of push buttons over here, right? Or, or limit switches or whatever. Well, I have to decide what I'm going to make common. So if I come over here and all these wires, when these are connected together, these are the common. Okay, so let's say I put this up to plus 24 volts. Now, what's the other side of the switch looking for? Is it looking for a ground, or is it looking for plus 24 volts? It's looking for the other side, right? So that means I'm going to bring this into my PLC, to my input port, and on my PLC, minus DC is going to be common. So if your common is minus DC, that means this is sinking. So if, if the device provides the, the the minus, it's sinking. If it provides the plus, it's what? Sourcing. So these guys over here are sourcing. So it means a sourcing input, a sourcing input device has got to be hooked up to a sinking input. Does that make sense? A sinking input device would have to hook up to a sourcing. So if I decided to wire them like this, so if I came over here and on this side, I put common, then over here on my input, it's common would have to be plus 24 volts. So this guy would be what? This guy would be sourcing, and this guy would be sinking. Does that make sense? So if you're using sinking inputs, or you, if you're using sinking devices, then you got to hook them up to sourcing inputs. If you're using sourcing devices, you've got to hook them up to sinking inputs. Uh, if you've got a if you've got a sensor that's got an NPN transistor in it, which means the emitter has to be connected to ground, then it's going to run a negative common. 
So I mean, if you've got a sensor that, if you've got a DC sensor that has an NPN, you're going to have to hook it up to a source and input. It. That makes sense. Or you've got to figure out how to do it. If you've got a PNP, which uses a positive common, then you've got to do what? Yeah, seeking input. So it depends on what sensors that you buy. So when you buy, and this only comes into play when you're dealing with DC. Because DC, you have to figure out what you're going to make common. Y'all understand what we're saying? Uh, we could go over and look at those PLCs and we could tell right off the bat if they're hooked up to sinking or if they're hooked up to sourcing. Uh, if you're doing push buttons or limit switches or these, these mechanical devices, you decide. But when you buy a sensor, you are going to determine whether it's going to be an NPN or a PNP. And if you buy it, then that establishes what your what type of input you've got to hook that up to, right? So be careful on that. You need to be careful. A lot of PLCs will tell you some PLCs you can you can change them, but but you can change them in uh, in groups. But we in, in, in what's need is in the current flow. The current flow through the input would always be the same. So no matter which way you hook it up, uh, if the switch is closed, it's going to see a digital one. If the switch is open, it's going to see a lot. It's going to, it's going to see a zero. But if you hook them up backwards, you're not going to hurt anything. So if I connected this up to plus 24 and I put this up to plus 24, then nothing will work because you don't have a, you don't have a circuit anymore, right? You don't have a difference of a potential. If I hook this up to, uh, if I hook this up and then I, so if I had a, a syncing module and I hook up a syncing device, then it's just not going to work. <laughs> Cause I don't have what? I don't have a difference of potential to have current flow. So, but when we come into these inputs and we go to the outputs, uh, so normally we sync in, it, and it's up to you. You, you need to understand that, uh, our, uh, the MicroLogics uh, over there, uh, you can set them up in groups on your input. So one set of groups you might set up for syncing. The other group you might set up for sourcing. Or you can set them up both for sourcing or you can set them up both for syncing. So that, they have commons. That, uh, the 504s, if you look, it says sync uh, on your input module, it says syncing inputs. And if you look at that, your output module, it says sourcing. So that means if you got a sourcing output, it's going to output a voltage for true, right? You understand that? So that means you're going to have to hook up your, your loads sinking, right? Understand? You don't have to, those will have to use a negative. That, that makes sense? Yeah. A relay, a relay PLC, it's up to you. I mean, AC, you don't have to worry about it because if I come over here and switch these around, what is that going to mean? Not going to mean anything because it's going to be what? It's going to be rectified. You get the same polarity out over here. Uh, if I come over and swap these around, it's still going to work because this is why the LED is on the other side. So it depends on what, what type of module you got. Some, some of your inputs are configurable. Uh, on Allen Bradley, they don't give you all your inputs. On all your inputs, uh, they run in groups. So you have so many you could hook up. You establish the common on so many, and then so establish the common on the other. So let's go over and look at it and see what the.